Hi, this is Jack. We'll continue along with this, this uh, combination building, as we call it, the two buildings put together. And we're going to go into uh, Ruby's Diner now, which nestles into the sandwich shop right behind. So it's not a complete rectangle because it has a little section cut out, so you want to pay attention to that. The first page we have kind of is an overview. It gives you a couple of pictures. It shows the interior of the tire and brake shop. Um, you can stick whatever signs you want in there. I happen to have an MG, so it ended up with an MG sign in there. So if you have a car, you might want to put your sign in if you like. The next page, again, is some more mug shop shots, as they say. It gives you the top view and a front side and then the, the stairway side. Um, there's nothing really hard about the building. This is another one. The trick to, of this building is to make sure that it gets square so it fits into the next building that's next to it. Uh, without leaving gaps and things like that. You know, one of the things, Jack, when we came up with this thought was to uh, have the, along the street, have a pile of dirt, uh, just weeds going up the front of the building. So even though both buildings come down to the same level, as far as you don't need to contour your layout, having that mound of dirt underneath the, um, the stairways on the side, the access stair going up, uh, would just help add some interest um, and take away from anything anything that's normal is not by unquote. level yeah a it little bit multiple levels all right the next page is our parts again it shows you all the sheets and all the numbers um, so where you can go and find them it shows uh, the tire and brake template and the sign for rubies so everything is there except you know for your detail parts and things like that uh, we're going to move on to the next page which gives you a uh, couple of elevations and these look like they're to scale they are so you can measure off these if you need to, or um, refer to them for size and squareness. So we're going to move on to the next page, and then it talks about, again, interior wall bracing. Again, make sure of all your setbacks and things that they show you here, or of your uh, interior bracing, so everything fits. Now remember here, you're, you're dealing with two different surfaces mounted atop of each other. You have, a, right. you have shingle building on top of a concrete we're basement gonna, or base. It's so. going to be very similar to the building we did before where the only difference is um, we had clapboard over task board. These walls are all task board all the way up. The only difference is once you get out of the section that is concrete you're going to have a scribe line on it that shows you where to put your shingles or it gives you guidelines for your shingles. So as you look at the thing you're going to have a line that goes right at the bottom of the restaurant. You'll see it when you do it. And that'll give you an idea to where to start paint from there down as concrete as we talked about before. It also has some exposed brick. You want to do it the same way. If you have some cracks, add a little bit of ink and alcohol in the crack to bring it out. It makes it look uh, really, really good. And there's a shingle line, uh, if you notice on the instructions on that page, that we specified the shingle line so you'll right. know where to start the shingles at the yeah. bottom naturally and first work row, your way yeah. up. Right, at the, yeah. at the first Overpaint course. your concrete just a little bit so it doesn't show through and you'll be all set. This one talks about, uh, the next section talks about um, don't jump ahead, go in order. And that's a, that's a really, really great idea. And then it talks about shingling um, the walls by laying them on the, on, right on the bench. Do them flat and then put the walls together. Don't try to put the walls together and then shingle it. Now um, these shingles are self-stick on this one? Uh, is that these what these are, are? These are self-stick. And paper loves paper, so basically you're dealing yep. with two paper products, so they're going to stick very, very well. Yeah, very well. Uh, just uh, just be careful to get them as straight as you can on yep. your courses. This is a sawtooth shingle. It takes a little bit more time than a regular shingle because it doesn't cover as much. But when you're done, you got a great, great different looking shingle. Um, so we painted the shingles a yellow and a trim a red. They tell me that's, Art tells me that's the colors we should be using for restaurants, so it makes people hungry. Not blue. You don't want to eat at a no blue dark restaurant. Colors, yeah. no, no, maybe no. A blue blue might be good for yeah. an adult club or something, but does it, it doesn't work for, although Ruby herself looks like she could probably host one, but. Once uh, you've done all your shingle and you sanded your edges here flat and you're going to put your corner posts in, make sure you paint all your trim pieces the color you want your trim before you install them. Um, it's just so easy, much easier than trying to paint them when they're on it. Um, so let's turn the page, and now we're talking about, um, by the way, there's something interesting. You talk about the corner posts there, Jack. Mm -hmm. Those are actually overlaid, which is unusual, because what we did was we put the That's shingles right. on, then we used a surface-mounted 
they're corner actually, post that's not really a corner post. They're one by threes, one. and there's one on each side to, to create the corner post. So right, and, and they are number 45. They're, they're made out of uh, self-stick plywood. It's P64S. It's on that sheet there. That's a lot of the trim. Yeah, along so you're with going to want to pre-paint those before mounting them. Along with your two rake pieces on either end. Right. Um, they should be all painted. And the comb for your raptor tails. It just makes it so much neater than, than having to work shingles into a, a seam with a, with a regular corner post. Yep. The next thing is you're going to put your um, one, two, three, four pieces of four walls together. Um, this short back wall. Trying to keep these two corners as, and these three corners as square as possible. That'll give you this little jog being square also. That is a bit of a challenge, so you want to take your yeah. time with that. And Use a square and, yeah. and get them square. Um, once you've done that, you get it square, um, the bottom pieces become flush and I puttied them and then sanded them and then I did all my painting of my cement work at this time once they were together and that gives me um, a nice smooth corner without a parting line. Um, and it's basically a light gray paint with a light beige paint and white and basically I dabble it on and rub it with my finger so it isn't a smooth color it just it is a multiple color. It's like a D&L gray right was yeah, it? Uh, yeah. Not, yeah. Or you know D&L I think it was right? At this time when I'm doing my concrete I also added this little wing piece which allows the stairs to come all the way now down. Now that you made up I don't, I don't think that it, did that become part of the kit Lenny? It did because that was an yes. afterthought uh, for the scene. Yes, Lenny right. says it's in here someplace. Yeah, it is. Yep. Okay. So that allows the stairs to come all the way down and still have a guardrail. So once you've got them all painted, your shingles all done, you're painted, and you've put on your trim pieces, um, the next thing is to put your windows in. And the windows are made up of uh, actually three pieces and your acetate. So you have a solid window, an overlay, which does the top sashes, and then the uh, border pieces that go all the way around. Um, so paint those up whatever color you want to put your acetate on um, test fit them make sure they fit once you, you get gotta them in, make sure the holes are cleared out from all those yep. shingles yeah you, you gotta, have to have to have that's uh, why test fitting thing. helps a lot um, I like to use a little like a nail file or something just yep. to make sure you know that window that the openings are true clean yeah. them out so yep. they go in um, once they drop right in they have no problem once you get that window cleaned out very simple yep and these are custom uh, laser cut windows here again you just can't buy windows uh, off the rack like this, so uh, this is the advantage of using a lot okay. of laser cut. You've material. got your windows in. The next piece you can put in is there's a little overhanging roof here, which comes with a comb with the raptor tails and a piece of cardstock that'll allow you to um, put it in as the roof on the overhang. I just painted it a gray and threw a patch in it, and it looks fine. I don't think we even had to put that's that. number 40 here yeah. on the on number the 40 and number 39. Right. Uh, we just painted it and put a patch on it and made it look like gray paper. Actually, is a 39 is a little bit different. 40, I believe, is the is the uh, 39 is the part that hangs out with 43 with the wrap that comes right. underneath. 40 actually inserts directly under the overhang to seal up the building right there. If you notice the way, right? Because the yeah. over, it, the the building juts out on one end at and, the top and of the 40, page. It shows you 40 that it closes off the right. Now, if you look lower on the page, you see how 39. Yeah, and is, they, is edge glued underneath yeah, it, and they're at an angle. It's dropped down at an angle. It's not. It's not perpendicular. With Otherwise, the there'd be a hole in the building right there. So we just oh, kind of sealed it up with building. that number four right. piece. Right. Yeah. If you're going to light it, you'll have a problem with it. If you don't, um, my suggestion again, uh, if you have your concrete all painted and your weathering all done, is before you put this overhang roof on, is you put in this brake tire and brake sign. If you f you look, you'll find a number. I think it's 42, is the stencil. So basically we taped the stencil in place so it won't move and we stippled it with a stiff brush. And I think I used some dark color. I think I used a black or, or dark gray and stippled it on. Um, depending on how faded you want the sign, depends on how much you actually paint put on to it. If you get it too much on it, you can go back over it and stipple it with a little of the gray and it will make it a little faded if you really want to do that. So once you get your sign on, and you got then you put your put your overhang on we can then put the roof on on the building uh, you'll need to put in the comb which is your raptor tails which is number 44 and then your roof number 41 drops on right on the top and glued in and then we went back and put on our our tar paper sheets strips 
and I think I put I just used a very dark um, almost black uh, color on that with a little bit of chalk and and uh, weathering not a lot so it would be different from all the other roofs now the big thing here is when uh, when I built this originally on the prototype was I used the main building in other words the building that we call the sandwich shop furniture shop as a squaring tool to help make sure that the building next to it went squarely because these things can angle a little bit and walk walk uh, walk a little bit yeah. and the roof uh, obviously defines it and it will give you some um, some some true alignment so if you have any adjustments to make if you want to do it before you join the two buildings and before you go on the roof make sure it sits square so the roof justifies on all the overhanging edges of the roof which is uh, you don't you don't want to glue it on then put it on the roof and find out that the building is not square underneath it. It's, it's a little bit finicky, uh, it's not a big deal, but you want to pay attention to it. I'm going to kind of diverge a little bit from the, the directions here, this, and I'm going to go in to talk about the interior piece on the bottom. Very important. Before, maybe even before you put the roof on, it might be a little bit easier to get that in there, um, instead of trying to work with a roof on the top and all four walls on it. So what you're going to get is three um, castings um, with all the detail parts cast right into the walls. Um, so basically we're going to go back to our cement color for the walls and then we're going to go back and paint the detail parts. But you do this before inserting. Yes, yeah, before I do anything I'm, I'm going to paint them. Before and no, I no bracing or anything on these. There's no bracing. There's no, no reason. Right. Yeah. Um, so once you've painted all your details and you got your walls painted you're going to create a U-shape with the three pieces um, and throw in some signs as I said before and you know, can make it your own. So um, then what you're going to do is you're going to slide it into the opening where the door is and line it up with the door on one side and then glue it right in place with some, I use Eileen's tacky glue. I happen to put a little piece of plastic on the bottom floor. Um, I don't think that comes with a kit, but you can do it if you'd like. No, we use a dirt floor. You can use a dirt floor right. either way, so it doesn't matter. I just did it because I held it together a lot better. So once you get your interior put in, then we can go back to where we were the page before, which talks about the stairs. The stairs are pretty straightforward because they come as our templates uh, to lay up the stairs. You do it uh, tread by tread, but it's being held together. And when you get it all put together, you get to cut that little piece off the bottom, the spacer, and your stairs are all put together really quick and easy. One, one thing in retro, Jack, on, on the, you have to flip uh, another page or so before you hit the, um, the scaffolding. And you'll see the pictures of the resin walls that are included with the kit. And they go in a certain way if they're going to fit. Okay? Right. You just can't put them in any old way because they won't fit right. So the one that's in the middle is in the middle because that's the way they, they're glued together. And you can see from the top, uh, from the top view that the back wall is actually glued between the two side walls. Okay? Uh, and all of the detailed castings are painted. And that, of course, if you want to add your signs and weather it and all, that, that this is the time to do it not once you're trying to reach inside the thing and this is a little bit shallow uh, compared to prototypical standards because if we made it full depth you wouldn't really be able to see see the details on the back wall so we force it a little bit from a model standpoint so you can actually look in and if, of course if you want to light it even better but you can actually look in and see the stuff hanging on the walls yep so once we once we've done all that again the interior piece we're going to go back one and we've done the stairs, so let's do the porch. Uh, it has a railing that's all laser cut, and then you're going to build your railing around your, your top platform there. And I painted, I think, them all white. It makes them stand out a little bit, uh, makes them look good. And there's the braces that go underneath. They can be all stained. I stained most of my stairs brown, and then I do white railings, and it just makes it pop out a little. The next piece you're going to see is the water tower. And that's pretty straightforward. The water tower itself on the top is a resin casting. And then the, the pieces that ho hold it up are a laser board. I think they're laser board. Yes, they yep. are. And you just glue the four pieces into the, to the square. And you add some little gusset plates in the middle. We painted it a gray and then weathered it up with some chalk to make it look a little rusty. We added the support members on the top to hold the tank up, glue the tank on, and we were done. Yeah, and you know, all those really pieces are located board. on the sheet LB, which means laser board, yep. and they're labeled number 55, because those are the gussets. Also, there's a number 56, looks like little donuts, and although we didn't mention it, when we have our lamps, which are special lamps that we make up here at Bar Mills, yep. uh, they're one-piece shepherd's hooks lamps, 
uh, rather than just take a hole and stick them in a wall, which is typical, we actually gave you these little circles that, uh, that can be painted the same color as the lamp, um, I don't know, hanger. Yeah, and the, uh, the lamp stem, right? And if you notice, we use square ones on this building, but in the um, on on, uh, on the in the kit that you'll get, they'll actually be cut because they're laser cut round, and they just add some more extra detail. So once you get your tank uh, all put together, with your bottom pieces and the painted, you can then situate it on the top roof. Now you have to make sure when you do this that the two side pieces are angle for the angle of the roof. So make sure you put it together with the two angle pieces on the side and then the two flat pieces on either side. Once you get it put together, you can turn it around and put it on, but you need to orient those pieces when you're putting it together. And you get, that's all number 58, but there are, there's a very, very slight angle to accommodate the pitch of the roof uh, mm -hmm. for the diner. So it's very, very, uh, very, very difficult to see, but it'll make a difference. If you put these walls in together the wrong way, uh, the tank will wobble and not sit squarely, so you want to be careful with that. And of course, the tank itself is a resin casting; it's one piece, so it's more about technique, pretty much, than anything else. Mm -hmm. And the, then it shows you once you install your water tank, you can install 54, which is your ruby sign. You're going to get a laser board piece. Then you're going to have to put your ruby sign. You're going to cut it out and adhere it to your sign. That's kind of a little winging it the way we did it. As a matter of fact, on our model, we never really finished putting the lights that should overhang up yep. there. Although you can see the tabs and the holes in them for the light mounting. Yep. Uh, it's just the last thing we just never got to doing. Yeah. And then the other thing is you're going, now you're going to mount your stairs uh, to the side of the wall. There's a mm -hmm. little, if you see it right under the door, there's a little slot. And that landing goes right into that slot. And then there are brackets underneath that look like it supports that stairway. And, and I see, Jack, the way you did it at the very bottom of the stair because it depends on how you build up your landform. That you added a couple just slivers of a basswood, I'm assuming. Yeah, I just made a, you made a little steps. platform there on the bottom. So, two steps. You may have to make some minor adjustments there depending on how you build it. Actually, those pieces, I think we found it was a cutoff from one of the other pieces from this, this building. There's always so, extra. So, sure. there's always extra pieces. And the last thing on that little piece is the little uh, roof that goes over the door and the two braces. Uh, throw a little piece of tar paper on top of the roof. Um, the hardest part of that whole thing is finding the holes for the uh, braces um, in under the shingles, but with the tip of your blade you can find them and clean them out and then just put your braces in and, and drop it close. Now this was supposed to be a short overview, but this one took longer than any of them because there's just so many different approaches to the techniques on this kit. So uh, yes, there's probably more but please use the instructions. Um, we do handhold you guys a little bit on this. Hopefully, um, hopefully uh, you guys will you know, be able to make use of these kind of long-winded hints that we throw at you from time to time. So for Jack Ellis and myself, this was the, uh, the build on the Ruby's Diner furniture store sandwich shop uh, part <laughs> of the kit uh, from the Delancey Street diorama.